live coverage, GP Columbus 2012. I'm Sheldon Mennery in the booth with Ben Swartz. We are getting special bonus coverage here in round 13 of game three. Josh Utter Layton v. Mike Jacob. There's good picture of J-U-L, as nobody calls him. <laughs> and <laughs> He's playing the uh, crazy pod deck, as we've, <laughs> we've been calling it all weekend. Playing against Mike Jacob who's playing the red, blue, white Delver deck that we've also seen be popular this weekend. Yeah, I mean, we've, seen, we've seen this matchup this yeah. weekend. This is, there's, I, I think as far as deck versus deck, anybody's game here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Mike Jacob has a lot of ways to disrupt the combo, but Josh, we saw it can come out of nowhere. Right. And Josh's deck, rather. And, there, and there's a certain point that Mike's deck can just run out of resources. Yeah. We saw that happen, uh, I believe, when we watched Shahar yesterday he has a bunch of early guys but nothing big right so I and then I mean uh, an important an important creature in this matchup for for Josh is probably uh, kitchen finks because I mean we're talking that the four life really you know, not even counting any restoration angel shenanigans that four life is a significant yeah, amount of damage. I, I actually watched both these players last round because I was in break. Josh was playing against Alex Magilton, who was playing a burn deck. And Alex had two Torp Orbs in play and two Ensnaring Bridges in play. So Josh played Noble Hierarch, played win. a Kiki Cheeky, copied his Noble Hierarch and attacked for one. <laughs> played a Phantasmal Image, copying his Noble Hierarch, attacked for three, attacked for three, attacked for three. And that was enough to do the burn player Alex in. But yeah. it, it was funny seeing, <laughs> seeing Noble Hierarch go the distance last round. Yeah, it's the uh, we keep we keep coming back to this point, but mo the modern format right now is the yeah. is the wild wild west of magic. Yeah. Uh, nearly anything can happen, even unexpected things like we saw in the last round, a really really grindy game from two not really grindy decks. All right, looks like Josh is going to take a mulligan here. Is Mike going to follow him? Nope, looks like he's keeping. Interesting hand. It looks like a one lander, and his one land is Watery Grave, which is a splash for his sideboard plan. Him and a bunch, Mike Jacob and a bunch of other players are playing this sideboard plan with gifts and given and burial rights. So you can <laughs> gifts, and if you only choose two cards, your opponent has to put both of those two cards in your graveyard. Correct. So you gifts for unburial rights, which has flashback, and a big fatty like Sphinx yeah, of the Steel Wind, yeah. Eleshnorn, Iona reanimating into play. Coming out of nowhere from this sort of aggressive deck game one, yeah. you have this combo kill, I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean, without without resolving a Liliana, Jun certainly just dies to Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Yeah, but we saw that uh, yesterday, who was playing, where they had a Liliana in play, and their opponent was playing the red-blue-white Delver deck and couldn't, couldn't reanimate, even right. though they had the ability to, couldn't reanimate because Liliana would just kill it immediately. Yeah. So you, there you get a good look at Josh going down to six cards here in round 13 of Grand Prix Columbus. Let's see what his six card hand. Yeah, again, the pod has. deck, the the pod deck is a is a deck that mulligans reasonably well. Is he has he gone to five? No, I think that's six cards. Although this one doesn't look that's too six, yeah. too good either. He so. is going to five. The the pod deck. Pod deck in general is a deck that mulligans relatively well. I mean, nobody wants to mulligan, yeah. but it, it can just get stuff with. I mean, if you get, if you can get a pod resolved, you can get stuff. You can get the chain going. The one uh, thing that makes it really fragile is the mana base, especially in the crazy pod list. Mm -hmm. If you just randomly draw some of your off color color dual lands, you might be unable to cast your turn one noble hierarch or even your your kitchen fix, things like that. Might be a. I, I saw Josh's first hand. I think both of them had one land, and one of them was the off-color uh, steam vents, I believe. Yeah, steam vents is not a lot of action for him. No, early especially on. yeah. Yeah, you really do need to, to stick a, a turn one accelerator to to, yep. to get going because that means theoretically turn two pod, turn two kitchen finks, turn three pod, yeah. search up at four drop. I would see a remand in in Mike's hand. I think you're right. I think he kept a one lander. Yeah. Or is that another, is that an island in there? I don't think so. I think he kept a one lander because he's got two Delvers and a Serum Visions. Looks like Arid Mesa will start things off for Josh and uh, planes drawn off the top for 
Mike Jacob, or uh, Marsh Flats. Marsh Flats, yeah. So Mike is figuring out his play. He's got two Delvers in hand and a Serum Vision. So he could Serum Visions on turn one, set up Delver, two Delvers on, on turn three that were going to transform into Insectile Aberrations. But probably the best play, I, I think I would play turn one Delver here. Look, Mike's making a note to himself of some kind. Now he's going to 18 to play his Water Grave yep. on tap. Yep, turn one Delver. Hope to just randomly flip, right. and if not, play a second Delver and a Serum Visions on the following turn. Another interesting card in Mike's hand is Faithless Looting, which I know a couple people were only playing in the sideboard in this red, blue, white deck, but he's playing it in his main deck. It's a one of. Yep. Along with the one of Vapor Snag, Twisted Image, and Spell Pierce, and Vendillion Punch. Twisted Image is an interesting card. It, it gets rid of Spell Sky, which I'm sure is the reason why people are playing it. So Josh cracked his fetch, ended up with a stomping ground, but he's only he's only on one landing. No, there's no there's no second land second turn play for him. And this this looks like yeah, MJ do whatever he wants. So he's gonna fetch out a steam fence with a scalding turn. Unfortunately Delver didn't flip our cameras. They hate Delver or er, hate Delver transforming. They really do not like to see Delver transform. <laughs> Apparently not. Well, I mean, unlike Legacy, I think here in Modern, we have a little bit l less library control. I, mean, I, mean, I think the library control is, is, is certainly superior in Legacy, with the, For sure. with the Brainstorm it's especially. It's superior in, in Standard to Modern. I think Ponder is right. so good. I'd rather have, if I were playing this deck, I'd rather have four Ponder than any Serum Visions or Sleight of Hands. Right. There's Delver number two after the first one has gotten into the red zone. Does Josh get a land? No. Birds of Paradise is all he can come up with. He'll pass the turn back, and likely MJ's Delvers are going to transform. <laughs> Gifts and given. Oh, this is game three, so they yeah. are sideboarded. Okay. Yeah, they are. They are definitely sideboarded. <laughs> uh, Josh, Josh certainly knows by now the, the, the transformative sideboard plan and this, this, this Gifts on Given thing. Yeah. Resolving Gifts Ungiven is probably pretty murderous for for Josh. So Faithless Looting for Mike. I mean, Josh is on a three-turn clock uh, because of those Insectile Aberrations. Josh needs to find something quick. And especially because he knows about the Gifts Ungiven, if this goes to a long game, Mike can search up a Leshnorn and Unburial Rites and flash that back to make sure that Josh cannot combo off all of his guys right. die except for Restoration Angel. Well, we see Mike, we see we see MJ has pitched the Gifts Ungiven there. He's got a second one in his hand, maybe three. He's got two more in his hand. Cracks the fetch. 14. Still plenty of time left on the clock for game three. Gets, his, gets a planes. I wonder if he's got a fancy white bordered one. <laughs> Nope, he's just going to attack He's in. Him. Josh, 12. Passes it back. Holding Remand up, maybe? Yeah, he does have Remand in his hand. We saw that in his opener. Two. Steam so Fence is the only thing for Josh. Hmm. And it comes into, it comes into play tapped because he probably doesn't have, a, he doesn't have a play in his hand. It doesn't look like there's a Spell Skite. He's got a Combust in hand, which is what he's holding up. So they can combust one of these insectile aberrations to save him a bunch of time. A desolate lighthouse for MJ. That's something I didn't expect to see in modern. The the loot house as it's called. Yeah. One blue red. Tap it. Draw a card. Discard a card. Mike's just gonna get in for three here with the insectile aberration. See what he's got post combat. He might just wanna hold up gifts and give it at the end of uh, Josh's turn here and cast that. Probably get, what, what do you think you get here if you're, if you're MJ? Do you get a Leshnorn, Iona, or Sphinx of the Steelwind? Well, it's an artifact that beats you. And it's an artifact that he needs the mana to cast. So I, I, I assume, well, there's birthing. That, yep. that may change things. Yeah. 
It is gifts. I think he wants to either get Elishnorn or... Yeah, I mean, I think it's still Elishnorn because it, it makes his aberration huge. And it makes... It, it, ki it kills the birds and it just slows down... It, it makes it so Josh can't co combo off because Kiki Jiki's a 2-2. Right, C yeah, because Kiki Jiki can't come up. So yeah, he's going to likely flash back on Barrel Rights on Elishnorn, attack for 5 with his Insectile Aberration. And say go to Josh. I don't think yeah, Josh there's is drawing live. There, there's no game. Josh draws his third land. Is that going to be enough? Spellskite. <laughs> and that's game. <laughs> I think Mike Jacob. I'm not sure why he cast the Spellskite. <laughs> I think he wanted to kill himself. He didn't want to give Mike the pleasure of killing him. Okay. So Mike Jacob takes down pretty good match with Josh Utterlate, and unfortunately uh, Josh did go to five in that game, so that game three wasn't much of a game there. Yeah. Um, Mike is uh, sitting at two losses right now, 11 and